Well, today is uh, the world of info and today is a special episode about books. And as usual, we know the rule of the game. I present uh, two books or three books every time. And every time I ask you uh, to evaluate this book, should be uh, should it be read, uh, skimmed or tossed? Uh, but I believe that uh, since I consume some time in reading these books, I always think that I'm bringing you only the books that deserve uh, to be read. And today there are uh, two very interesting books that I believe uh, attract the attention of the listeners and definitely the readers. Uh, the first book is called uh, Fake Heroes by Otto English, who is a British uh, uh, journalist and writer. And his, uh, uh, this is the pen name of Mr. Andrew Scott. And he has chosen this uh, name because Andrew Scott is also the name of a famous actor. So he didn't want uh, people to be uh, 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 getting the wrong information that the actor is also a writer. So he decided that he's going, his pen name is going to be Auto English. And the second book is the most important 101 movies in the Egyptian uh, cinema industry. And it is by uh, Samah Fatmi. And I believe also this is an interesting book. So today we are going rush to you and to tell you all about these books and stay tuned with us. So we are coming live from Studio 3. Our dive time number is 25789407. And yesterday is the uh, world of books coming from the world of info. And the first book is F Fake Heroes by Auto English or the, this is the pen name of Andrew Scott. And we have presented uh, the, his first book, which was called Fake History, which presented also 10 incidents in history that are fake and they have taken up the place of uh, true facts in the minds of a lot of people. And today he is uh, going uh, one more step further to tell us that there are uh, certain people in history who have taken up the place of heroes while they don't deserve to get this uh, title. On, contra on the contrary, they should be even removed from this status all through. And he's trying to give uh, us a lot of information about uh, these people and trying to convince us that uh, they should be omitted from the status of heroes. So how this is uh, right or how this is uh, wrong, that's what we are going to discuss right away. Because he has presented uh, very important uh, 10 characters in the history. And these characters have always, uh, almost always, deserved the title of a hero in the uh, aspiration and inspiration of a lot of people. Uh, and we'll just try to start away with the uh, fact that what is the difference between the hero that stays in the minds of the people forever and the temporary hero who has done uh, something of a gallant effect that has saved the life of a human being or have saved the life of uh, of people in an incident or an accident and therefore he attracted the attention of the population, stayed there for quite some time and then disappeared. And he's giving the example by Wesley Autry who is a gentleman who in 2007, in January the 2nd, uh, one, while he was uh, in the underground uh, station, so uh, a gentleman, another young chap, and he was with his daughter, and he saw a young chap falling on the uh, railway just before a train is coming, and uh, everybody was staying mesmerized. They were not able to do anything as the train was coming, and this gentleman left his daughter, went down trying to save the guy. He couldn't save him, so he knelt on his body, put his head down and himself, and he, uh, uh, the train passed on them, and he was uh, not uh, un he was left uncast he and the guy who has fallen on the railway so for a lot of people he was considered to be a hero and he has deserved acclaim not only from the uh, from the whole world but also from the president from the uh, media from oprah winfrey from every person that is known always try to attract the attention of uh, Wesley Autry and having a word with him or talking about his uh, really gallant uh, move and, uh, and courage that has uh, driven him to try to save the life of somebody he really doesn't know and risk his own life in return for saving the life of this gentleman. And he said that this guy one year later 
could e even fall from this notoriety and from this being well known and being famous into somebody who is in the back of their mind and they really don't care about him anymore. So this is an example of a hero, of a gallant man who did an action that deserves a lot of admiration, whether today, tomorrow or after years. But times ten, ten, time tends to fly and this, uh, this name will disappear uh, in the days and works and the activities of the people and the amount of news that we receive every day and the business that we are doing. So this gentleman will disappear uh, sooner or later. And in his case, it took him almost one year of being so famous and everybody concerned about him. And then it faded away. So this is the example of a true hero. The second example is about uh, wars, heroes or political heroes, revolutionary heroes, religious heroes, artistic or business or heroes of exploration, royal heroes, science heroes, childhood heroes, all these type of, of, uh, uh, of heroes that stay with the public. People always admire them. The number of people who think that they are great or have done a great job are a lot always and, and are counted in millions. So let's talk about the first one of these people uh, in more heroes, for example. And he's referring to a pilot by the name of Douglas Bader. And he was a quite famous pilot because two things. First of all, he was enrolled in World War II. He fought was an ace fighter pilot. He has downed uh, many uh, enemy planes. He was very famous for his gallancy. And he was very famous for... Uh, being uh, very brave, all right? This is one thing. And the second important thing is that after he enrolled in the Air Force in the early 30s, he has been subjected to an accident that led to the amputation of both of his lower uh, legs below the knee, and therefore he would not be able, he should have not be able ever to fly an aeroplane. But he, through his persistence and perseverance, was able uh, to not only to get artificial uh, uh, prosthesis, prosthetic legs, but to be able to use them and was able to modify some planes in order that he can uh, share and take his share in the war that happened in 1939 onwards. So he is definitely a brave man. In 1943, uh, he was uh, downed on his plane as he was attacking some German planes and his plane was downed and he was taken as a prisoner of war. And when he was taken as a prisoner of war, he kept on trying. First of all, he asked for to be reunited with the two prosthesis, prosthetic limbs that were sent to him through the Red Cross. And then he was put into a special a prisoner of war camp where he has given very hard time to everybody. Whether this <laughs> people are the German officers in charge of him or his uh, colleagues, because he always uh, made a nagging and always this necessitated that uh, the whole uh, uh, camp as a whole is going to be punished for the, uh, what we say, the passive resistance or the active resistance that he did. And he has tried very hard to escape, but of course he failed due to his uh, handicap and he was released from the prisoner of war camp just before the end of the war. And uh, he tried so hard to be uh, and asked to be transferred to the other uh, Pacific side where uh, the war was still going on with Japan to have a chance to fight again. But luckily enough, he was not involved in this. The, his notoriety and his fame came from these uh, facts that he was an ace fighter pilot and that he was handicapped and that he was brave. A lot of people didn't admire his uh, his uh, character or his way he was addressing his uh, uh, junior officers or the junior mechanics that were with him. But this, I think, comes from the fact that he was handicapped. He reached more fame uh, onwards when in 1956 there was a movie that was made about him and about his uh, story, which is very stimulating. So we'll talk about the positive things. The positive things is that this gentleman has definitely uh, affected the uh, how the handicapped people are perceived and how they, everyone is looking at the handicap that they can do and that they can Im improve their life and even do things that 
uh, normal uh, persons or normal people or physically fit people cannot do. And this is a very good stimulant. And that's why I respect uh, Bader very much. But the author says that his character was unbearable, that he has, for example, has written an introduction to a book uh, by a Nazi uh, a fighter pilot, or the, an ace fighter pilot uh, from a Stuka a fighter pilot who always never deny, denounced his Nazism even after the war. And this he, th- he considered to be a, a wrongdoing. The second important thing that he was uh, very ill-tempered, and we discussed that before. And the third important thing that he was very racist, for example, in uh, as in 1950s, the uh, the independent movements of the independence movement that happened uh, through the colonies of uh, Britain uh, has uh, seen him saying that these Africans should be uh, allowed to stay in the jungle and that good people like the white man or the white man's supremacy should rule. And uh, in 1956, he had his share of uh, uh, anti-Nasser and anti-Egypt and anti-Africa uh, attacks on, on their well-being and on why should, not, why should they fight the Brits and they should allow the Brits again to go in. So his imperialistic or his racist comments are on one side and on the other side how far he has improved the cause uh, and the fight for the handicapped. And I believe that his, uh, uh, he has done a really uh, good job in this. So we can say that uh, his uh, imperialism is a different character than the way he has shown the others. So I'm not very much with Otto English in saying that he does not deserve the word, the word of a hero. <coughs> Sorry. And then the second character that he has shown, I believe this is a very important character and we'll talk about it after the break. So we're coming live from Studio 3 and uh, we're continuing with the world of info and the world of books. And the second important character in the fake heroes or the third character in the fake heroes is the character of John Kennedy. Yes, John Kennedy. Otto English is not a big fan of John Kennedy and he's saying that uh, he is uh, overestimated as a, as a hero and that he has uh, he was the cause of a lot of the problems that he tried to solve. So when he discussed the, the biography of John Kennedy, we remain to ask ourselves how far is John Kennedy uh, considered to be a, a real uh, hero. I believe that John Kennedy uh, deserves uh, his place in history. Uh, he was a talented, highly educated person. He received a degree from Harvard University and uh, definitely he had received, as Otto English is saying, a lot of support from his father, Joseph Kennedy Sr. Joseph Kennedy Sr. has helped his son uh, not only to go to Harvard and supported him, but also his thesis, which was about uh, about why uh, Britain uh, slept or how Britain slept. Uh, that was before the war. This is what I'm talking about, the Chamberlain ordeal. And uh, he was able to change this thesis that he had in his final year in Harvard into a book that was a bestseller. He said that the book uh, was uh, rewritten and uh, adapted by a very important ghostwriter and a journalist who helped him very much to write the book in this beautiful, attractive prose. And also the second book that he has published in his in the 1950s also received a lot of support from another ghostwriter. So this is concerning the capability of John Kennedy to be a writer or a good writer. The second important point he was discussing is that, of course, the rumors and, of course, some of it is fact that John Kennedy was not that uh, faithful person and he was having a lot of... Uh, Uh, womanizing uh, activities during and before uh, his uh, tenure in the White House. The third important point he is uh, to blame about his uh, role in the uh, Bay of Pigs. He could have really withheld the invasion because he should have studied more. I know that uh, we know all that this invasion has been planned by uh, 
Eisenhower and his administration before, uh, in the last days of Eisenhower administration, but John Kennedy was the one who has given the green light. So the animosity that happened afterwards with Cuba and the animosity that happened with uh, Khrushchev and, uh, and the USSR, part of it is being responsible for it is uh, John Kennedy himself. So uh, this is a point of debate that uh, remains to be tested. Should John Kennedy be uh, really blamed for that or not? And of course, uh, his idea of uh, sending a man to the moon has put a whole uh, brunt on the uh, the investment and the, the amount of money that uh, the budget of the United States and remains and that's another important point is his role in the Vietnam War. Uh, we know that Eisenhower is the one who got involved in Vietnam, but Kennedy didn't stop this in, uh, inv involvement. On the contrary, he started to increase the number of the American uh, specialists who are there on the ground, and the number increased more, of course, after his uh, assassination by uh, Johnson. Because Johnson, I mean, Johnson administration also increased the number until it reached the forces almost half million over there. The most important thing is that he was responsible for the putsch or the coup d'etat that happened on the uh, uh, South Vietnamese uh, president that ended up with his assassination. And this was only almost one month away from the assassination of Kennedy himself. So this is how Otto English said. Yes, he solved the problem of uh, of uh, the the Cuba pro crisis, of the military uh, arm crisis, but he claims that he was responsible for a big amount of uh, these crises that happened during his tenure. Uh, how far did he help and support Martin Luther? And how far his brother Robert Kennedy were with the human rights? Uh, Otto English is being very biased against the role of John Kennedy. So what remains of John Kennedy as a myth? Definitely his uh, his murder, his young age when he died, and uh, his family and his good looks definitely gives us the word of Camelot or the word of nostalgia that we feel about John Kennedy. How far Otto English words things are right? I believe just 30%, not 100%. John Kennedy was not a saint, but he was definitely a, a good man who tried very much to help. Definitely, he is the son of the era and the age that he lived in. Maybe he tried as much as possible. Maybe he's involved. He's a human being after all. But he's not that big demon, as uh, as Otto English is saying. The fourth character is, of course, is Che Guevara. And we all know Guevara. He's a Bolivian. Uh, uh, he's an Argentinian uh, young man coming from a middle-class family who uh, went to medical school for studying, and he had a trip on a motorcycle with one of his friends uh, on Chile, and there he has seen the discrepancy between uh, the rich and the poor, and therefore he went into extensive uh, nostalgic communism. And uh, his help and support to the anti... Uh, uh, <coughs> the to, to the revolution of uh, Fidel Castro and his involvement with Fidel Castro and the befriending of Fidel Castro uh, in his uh, struggle for power in Cuba made uh, Fidel Castro decide to make him uh, a Cuban and not only a Cuban in nationality, but also to give him the Ministry of Education, of sorry, of economics to be responsible for building or should we say destroying of the economy of, of Cuba. Uh, his role, of course, in uh, allowing everybody to get proper health care and proper education in Cuba is a very important role, and this is one of his mottos. But, of course, his uh, destructive effect on the economy of uh, Cuba was uh, can never be denied. However, the the nostalgic effect or the romantic idea of uh, of uh, Che Guevara to transfer and to transmit and uh, to export the revolution that happened and the success that happened in Cuba in other places, whether this is in Africa or in Bolivia, where he met his uh, fate and died, remain always to be answered. Is really Guevara a human being, a hero, or a man who has a lot of sins? 
And part of these things, of course, is his involvement uh, during his uh, early days of the revolution in uh, in Cuba on the authority with a number of uh, m- m- condemning de- to death the death sentences that he has signed against the aides of the uh, previous uh, regime and how far he has uh, was responsible for the uh, free kill of all these uh, people without any mercy. The second important point, was it necessary for him to try to export the uh, revolution into different lands, like in Africa, where people he didn't know and didn't understand really what's the political situation, or in Bolivia, where the people themselves were not attracted to the idea of making a revolution against the the current government. And then even some of these uh, people have acted as snitch against him and uh, has uh, directed him to the, directed the, the forces that were responsible for killing him to, uh, to the government. So, uh, presented him to the government. So, uh, how far Jivara is a saint or a hero or a human being who is some sins and some good deeds remain to be answered. The fifth character of uh, who he thinks that they are uh, fake heroes is Mother Teresa. Yes, Mother Teresa, who has been beatified and acted uh, and given the title of a saint uh, very soon after his, her death, remains to be a, a very important uh, character in Calcutta, uh, remains to be a very important uh, lady who has given a lot of help and kindness to the poor people and the impoverished people in India. How far is Mother Teresa clear from the sins of treating the people bad? Well, this is a question that has been asked by Otto English. How far did she help with the huge amount of money she had? She never stole money, of course, but the amount of money and the big budget that she had to support all the hospices that she has made all over India. Did these hospices receive all the money that they need or not? Did they receive all the physicians and the proper management of the people who were dying in their last days or not? And how far were the uh, members, the, the, the sisters, the nuns who were members of, uh, of this uh, uh, sisterhood of Mother Teresa uh, received the proper uh, treatment and didn't suffer as some of them who uh, left the 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 covenant and return to normal life claim that they have been um, uh, molested psychology psychologically always having the feel of guilt and feel of uh, uh, struggling with their own selves and trying always to punish and banish themselves and he's saying that this type of painful uh, life is not uh, constructive so how far was mother teresa constructive or not remains to be answered Another important uh, controversial character is Andy Warhol, the famous artist who has uh, given us the beautiful silk screens that we know about the uh, about about uh, Marilyn Monroe and about a lot of uh, Ke- about Kennedy and about Jacqueline Kennedy. All these structures and beauty that we have seen has made him a very important brand. But how how much of this has been produced by himself? and not by the whole establishment of assistants that were serving him, remains to be the question that is asked by by, uh, by Otto English. Really, does uh, uh, Andy Warhol deserve his name as in the Hall of Fame as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century with the most expensive uh, price for his artifacts? Is it really deserved? We know that the, the, the market of the artifacts is not related to the real uh, st- structure of it because uh, it, it depends on the taste, it depends on how famous is this work and it shows us that uh, his work and his uh, uh, interviews that were made by him always stated that he had his own assistants who helped him in the silk screen business and uh, he said that some of them have given him ideas but the patency and the, and the, the branding of the mark and of his name remain very, very important. As we know, of course, one of his most famous pictures 
was about Che Guevara was not produced by him, but produced one of his assistants. But he accepted this and uh, was able to, and accepted to sign its na his name on it, and therefore has given it the legitimacy and the authenticity that made this uh, piece of art very expensive. <clears throat> so as we go, we know or we see through the eyes of Otto English how far are heroes, human beings or superhumans. And as we discuss every one of them, we'll find that they are not superhumans. They are human beings who have known uh, the normal life of a human being. That is, they suffered, they fought, they acted strongly, they were uh, uh, <coughs> mistreated, maltreated, they maltreated others. Uh, they have received fame in different periods of their lives or even posthumous, but definitely they had something to do in this world. Uh, if we talk about the art, or, uh, the art, then we can go about the fashion. And he has given us the example of Coco Chanel. And this is a very controversial character. The lady who has been like an orphan and she has li lived in, in a home of orphans for quite a long time. And uh, she suffered a lot in her life and she was definitely talented. She has produced and had the talent to produce very beautiful uh, lines of uh, models and uh, modern uh, clothes that uh, up till now is surviving and uh, changed the taste of the whole world. But unfortunately, she has lived in hard times. She has lived in World War I. She has lived in World War II in occupied Paris, where there were the Germans and the Nazis over there. And she had to live, to survive, and she had to communicate with these Nazis. How far did she communicate? How far did she communicate with Churchill and with the Brits? And how much did she negotiate or act as a double agent? This remains to be answered. But definitely, uh, Coco Chanel on the outskirts, we don't want to treat her as a saint. We want to treat her as an artist. Yes, she was a talented artist a lady of fashion, a lady who deserves a place in history. But for Otto English, she's a false or she's a fake hero. Another controversial uh, character is the Captain Scott, in uh, the one who has tried to reach the South Pole and failed and died on his way back because he didn't win. The, he didn't come back and the, and the Norwegians were the ones who were able to succeed and come back with the with the success story. <clears throat> how far Captain Scott was good as a leader of this group and how far he was prepared for this uh, severe ordeal, it tends to show that he was not uh, as clever as the Norwegian gentleman and therefore he lost his life and lost the life of his fellows because of being ill prepared for this a severe journey, but he received fame posthumous because he insisted on trying and trying to live and trying to survive. So in death, he has uh, uh, filled out the program of uh, his life or being immortal up till now. Uh, another uh, idea about Henry V, as, as, uh, who was uh, immortalized by uh, Shakespeare and a lot of his contemporaries and later on, and he thinks, out to English, that he doesn't deserve the title of being a real king because he has done a lot of atrocities and nobody can deny that. Reaching uh, another important uh, aspect is talking about the scientists. The scientists who, uh, one of them was responsible for the production of the leaded fluid and for the ferion gas. These two gas, these two things have really affected the health and destroyed the environment and was responsible for destroying the health and the well-being of millions of people. And he was, through his scientific background, always defended his opinion and uh, has uh, misdirected the whole world and saying that his products were good ones. And this produced huge amount of money for the investors and huge losses on the health side and the lives. So for some time during his life, Thomas Midgley has been considered to be a hero of science, while actually he is not and does not deserve the word hero. And the last but not least is talking about the childhood heroes. And for this, the best example is John Wayne, because John Wayne as an actor has always attracted the attention of people. He always presented 
the skillful person who the skillful cowboy who will never uh, shoot on an unarmed person who will never shoot a person at the back a man who is having his own principles but on real life jo- john wayne was a good actor because his true story is not matching with the character of uh, this uh, ideal person he was extensive conservative right right-sided uh, politician he was with mccarthy in all the decisions that he made against the cinema movies he never enrolled in the uh, try uh, tried to escape and he was successful from escaping in the service of the united states army uh, <clears throat> during world war Two, and he was uh, very extensively on alcohol and on cigarette smoking that really has affected his health and led to its uh, premature deterioration so Uh, is he a hero or not? Well, John Wayne himself, of course, for Otto English, he is not a hero. But John Wayne himself has said that uh, John Wayne, the actor, is different completely than Duke, the his original name or his nickname, uh, than Duke Maureen, who was a humble man coming from a humble uh, origins. And uh, John Wayne, the actor or this uh, strong cowboy, is the one he uh, he admires very much, but it's not him. It's definitely not the same character. However, one of the good deeds of John Wayne was that he was always kind to the people on the set. He would give them amounts of monies and bonuses from his side and help them in times of need. So was he a real knight in shining armor or not? He was not. But the movies that he has made, the, the characters that he has... Uh, Uh, shown has given us the imagination that he was uh, a knight in shining armor. So a knight in shining armor on the cinema and a normal human being with a lot of uh, handicaps on real life proves that John Wayne deserves one of the, the, the single Oscar that he had in his lifetime. And definitely he was a good actor. You're still listening to Radio Cairo. This is World of Info, and today is the world of books. We have just discussed the book of Fake Heroes by Otto English or Andrew Scott, the famous or the well-known writer, and talking about uh, fake heroes. Are they really true or not? And he has given the example of 10 of the very famous hero in the history of the world. And the second book of today is an interesting one because it talks about a subject that everybody of us really like and definitely has uh, shared in his life, whether uh, whatever nationality is his, which is the cinema industry or the movie industry. And the Egyptian movie industry is a very rich industry coming from a history from the 30s where we have seen, started seeing movies that belonged to... Uh, the day of the black and white and even even to silent movies. And the book is called The Most Important 101 Films in the Egyptian Movies. And it, it started from the Egyptian movies uh, history up till the year of 2006. So uh, definitely there have been more movies to talk about after this period. And the gentleman who has written this book is has written this book celebrating 90 years on the Egyptian uh, movie industry and is by uh, Samah Fathi. And uh, Samah has given us a very interesting uh, understanding about the how he has written the book. He has given us the uh, the famous advertising uh, affiche or the, the paper work that was put on the uh, for the advertisement of the of the film the old one that has been usually painted, not uh, photographed. And the second important point, he talks about the movie, uh, who who was the writer, who was the producer, who was the director, and what's the cast. Then he talks about, in every movie, about the plot of the movie and how it ended. And he also writes a, a, a beautiful uh, small paragraph about the master scene of the movie. So this makes the book really interesting because you can just glimpse through the book and see a lot of films that you have really watched during your childhood uh, continuously or whether this is on the fair, on the classic uh, film channels or whatever. You always have to see these black and white movies that form a part of our, uh, of our, our life. And uh, perhaps the first movie that he has decided to, to choose as one of the best movies 
is Salam of Khir by Nagib Rahani. And yes, Nagib Rahani is one of the favorite actors that everybody would love uh, to see. And his uh, sort of control of the comedy, of the situation that makes us laugh. And every time we see him, we really, uh, we are very happy uh, to understand uh, how can really he be uh, getting into our hearts after almost 90 years after uh, his death. Definitely, uh, Nagib Rahani is one of the very talented uh, actors, and I believe that he deserves to have the first uh, place. The second movie is Al Azima or The Will, and of course, everybody knows and hear, heard about this movie how beautiful it is. Then, The Ambassador of Hell or The Hell Ambassador by Yusuf Wahabi, where he has. Uh, uh, done the beautiful character, the the character of the devil himself in a very beautiful way. Uh, Fatma by Umm Kulthum with the beautiful songs that we have seen, and also another film by uh, Nagib Rahani, Ghazl Banat. And definitely, this is one of my favorite movies, and I believe it's a lot of more favorite movies. Then come the the films of uh, Farid Chowki, like Osta Hassan, and other films of Rushdie Abaza and Anwar Wagdi, Raya and Skina. All these movies can really uh, take uh, us into or direct us to the master uh, movies of Fatih Hamama and Omar Sharif in his early days and early years in the 1950s. His first movie, his uh, Struggle in the Valley in 1954, shows Omar Sharif uh, definitely as a talented actor. And let's stop uh, a minute with Omar Sharif himself, because uh, Omar Sharif in all his interviews uh, was always very modest. He would always tell us, uh, I don't deserve to be uh, that famous. A lot of people should have had my chance better than me. They could have fared better than me. And this way of, of humbleness really attracts the admiration of anyone who sees these interviews. He say, what do I do? I do a very small job. I just... Uh, memorize certain passages and just go and present them in front of the camera and I don't feel that important. Well, for us, Omar al-Sharif was very important and very truthful in all the scenes that he has made and all the movies that he made in the 50s, started with Struggle in the Valley in 1954 with, uh, with the famous uh, Fatih Hamama, who was at that time more famous than him, of course, and uh, nobody can resist the, the charm of Omar al-Sharif. She got married to him in the end afterwards. Anwar Wagdi is an important character in the 50s, and unfortunately he died from the, uh, from the renal failure that happened to him, and there was no treatment at that time, and there was no treat, uh, uh, renal transplant surgery. So uh, a lot of his movies are in the first 10 or 20 movies until he passed away in 1955. Wahsh or the uh, the Beast is one of these movies, and uh, one of the master uh, movies of uh, Farid Chowki is They Made Me a Criminal of uh, Garuni Mugreman also remains to be an, an, a real uh, place in the whole world. The, uh, the famous uh, other uh, movies that include, that always attract to my, my attention is the uh, the use of a woman by, uh, by uh, Shadia Tahaya Karyoka and Shukri Sarhan definitely uh, remains to be one of the very classical movies that always attract the attention of, uh, of, of the viewers. Another film like uh, Struggle in the Valley by Fatin Hamama and Omar Sharif definitely is another way of motto of saying uh, struggling as if it is a sort of uh, a series of movies and every time it is proving the importance of uh, Omar Sharif and filling his space. We can see in the 50s that there was not only Omar Sharif, there was Farid Chauqi, there was uh, the start of Rojdi Abaza, the start of the start of the career of Ahmad Ramzi, and of course, uh, Kamal Shinnawi, who has been active for quite a long time and having a place for himself under the sun. Farid Latrash always stay with us with his, his thinking capabilities, and one of the famous films in the 50s, 1957, is You Are My Love. And, uh, of course, the film of Naima uh, Akif, Ahmad Ramzi, and Rujdi Abaza, Tamr Hinna, always is one of the best movies that you can see in classical movies uh, every now and then on the, on the different uh, channels of, uh, of TV. 
the start of appearance of Abdul Harim Hafiz or the vacant uh, pillow by uh, Abdul Harim Hafiz and Lubna Abdul Aziz and the, the strong uh, passage of uh, Ahsan Abdul Quddus short stories in, in, and change into movies remain like uh, I Don't Sleep or the, the, the vacant pillow all can give us the idea of how Ahsan Abdul Quddus was a real uh, good writer and having a lot of uh, things to share with us. As we go to movies that have taken up the places or a symbol of uh, a period like Rud the Qalbi or Return My Heart to Me is another uh, example of uh, the use of politics uh, in order or use the movies to uh, deliver a political message. Uh, Bab al-Hadid or the start or the perhaps one of the uh, early and very few uh, roles that Yusuf Shaheen has taken a role as an actor has proved uh, him, to himself that although he was acting good he will not do it again <laughs> and uh, and of course uh, a lot of uh, movies to, to go on that might take us on to political movies like Gamila by Magda or uh, another movie like I'm a Free Lady like uh, by Lubna Abdul Aziz also another story of Ahsan al Quddus the famous Al Atab al Khadra by uh, Sabah Hamaza and Ismail Yassin will always attract uh, our attention to his, uh, to his role in making for us beautiful uh, movies. Uh, as we go through the book, we can really remember uh, a lot of names and, uh, and films that have really formed and still forming part of our, uh, uh, <coughs> about our file of uh, movies, of favorite movies that we keep on seeing and watching on, on the TV channels and still attract our attention. Some of these movies are repeated in certain occasions, like for example in Nasr Salah al-Din or Rud Qalbi or whatever. And other films are classical films that had a second part, like for example, uh, Umm al-Arusa, The Mother of the Pride by Tahiyya Karyoka. And this was in 1963. And later on in the 70s, we have the, the second part of the movie uh, claiming the name to be the, grand, uh, the grandson uh, or Hafid where some of the actors are there and others are not. Of course, the, the difference of 13 or 14 years uh, can really definitely make another uh, sp spot. The Smooth Hands, or Aydin Naima, by Sabah, another uh, Sabah and Ahmad Mazhar, gives us another example of how the cinema does uh, the role of uh, sending political messages. And then, of course, uh, the role of Naguib Mahfouz in the Egyptian movie industry should never ever be forgotten because he was the writer and uh, and producer and of course uh, script writer of a lot of movies and uh, some of his novels have been changed into movies like Min al Qasriya and Sukariya. Uh, all this uh, really have uh, changed the story into a movie and under the control of uh, the the author himself makes it very different. And as we go through the uh, the the how uh, the, the comic movies uh, has gone and how important movies, for example, like Bustagi or The Postman by, by Yahya Haqqi, it's a very important novel, has been changed into a movie and uh, with the beautiful acting of Shukri Sarhan and uh, definitely one of the mm -hmm. most important uh, films of the late 60s, a film that was allowed only on the cinema with a special permit from President Nasser himself which is uh, the fear or part of fear by Sarwat Abaza. The role of Shadia and Mahmoud Morsi and Yahya Shaheen in this film really uh, are mesmerizing and uh, the sort of projection that some people thought that they are projecting towards uh, Nasser and Nasser has given the permit to the movie and saying that this is a first class uh, movie and acting it should not be uh, avoided. Another movie also in the last days of Nasser was also Miramar. It's a story by Nagim Mahfouz which is uh, sort of criticizing the whole political uh, agenda of the of the socialist union which was the only party of uh, of egyptian politics at that time can give us an idea of how uh, there was a little uh, allowance of uh, of the surveillance at that times after of course uh, 1967 uh, we can see that the role of nagib mahfouz Hassan abdul quddus as writers Ali Zurqani as a script writer, uh, the role and the movies like uh, the grand movies of uh, 
<coughs> of Yusuf Shaheen, like the Ard or the, the ground. And of course, uh, this is a very important movie by Yusuf Shaheen and a film that deserves to be seen. The uh, Sunset and Sun Do- and Dawn uh, by Suat Hosni and Rij- Rojdi Abaza and Salah Zulfuqar, brilliant acting, is one of the movies that always attract our attention whenever it is repeated in the movies. As we see, and as we go, we can see some movies that we really don't understand, or we don't know, or we haven't heard of them. But other movies still remain as a mark in the, in the portfolio of the Egyptian movies, like, for example, Gothip on the Nile by Nagib Mahfouz Sarsara for Emir, a brilliant uh, cast of actors, including Ahmad Ramzi, Magda Khatib, Mervet Amina, Ahmad Hamdi, Adel Adham, Suhir Ramzi, Naamad Mukhtar, and Ahmad Tawfiq and Salah Nazmi, they uh, have tried to show the important story of Nagib Mahfouz, of lost uh, upper middle class uh, people in a very desperate situation and how they acted and how far uh, they uh, were able to pick themselves out up after uh, this uh, d- definitely uh, strange uh, periods and times. The word of honor where, where it has uh, three of the most important uh, John premiere of of the 60s, uh, and I mean that Ahmad Mazhar, Rujdi Abaza and Farid Shawi, the three of them uh, although Rujdi Abaza appeared in the movie just for five minutes but the three of them to be in the same uh, movie makes it one of the very special uh, movies of uh, of the 70s and the 60s. The Mummy, the, f- the famous movie of Shadi Abdel Salam is a mesmerizing movie. Whenever you see the movie and see how far it's talking about the Abdul Rasul family, the family that was having all the secrets of uh, antiquities and of the mummies in the uh, in the Valley of the King and the Valley of Queens, and yet uh, they kept this secret for hundreds of years, and one of them has conveyed the message to the uh, authorities, and they were discovered or rediscovered and sent back to the museum. The, the movie is, is just beautiful. The scenes are out of this world. The use of the camera and the, uh, the use of the clothes. We after, no, after all, we know that uh, Shadi Abdel Salam was not just a talented director, but he was also responsible, for example, of, of the cast and clothes of, uh, uh, and the knitwear of the uh, m- famous historical movements, which are Wa uh, Islama and, of course, uh, Salah al-Din. Nasa Salah al-Din. All these movies, the clothes which were very accurate were made by under the supervision of uh, Shadi Abdel Salam himself where he drew every picture. So uh, he, he was known as the one uh, movie uh, director because he has consumed a lot of time and a lot of effort in building every scene, drawing every scene before having it on camera, which is almost uh, something that is uh, impossible, gruesome, and uh, very difficult to do, and yet he was able to do a film that has been living for the past uh, 40 years up till now, or 50 years up till now. Another uh, film which I believe is a very important cornerstone movie is that of I Want a Solution, Uridu Hallan by Fatih Hamama and Rujdi Abaza, talking about the law of marriage and how it's a big problem for ladies to get a divorce, and this has helped the 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 law uh, makers to change the law into the favor of the ladies according to uh, the moder the moderate Islam, not according to the ways that these people uh, have decided uh, to abuse the law. Another important uh, cornerstone of the Egyptian movies is Al Karnak by Saad Al Husni, of course, and the guilty ones by Ragi uh, Mahfouz and Saeed Marzou Muznibun always can tell us how the the fact that uh, writers as talented as uh, as Nagib Mahfouz or uh, important people can definitely uh, change very much the the how the movies go and how the cinema goes. Uh, Karnak has been written by Nagib Mahfouz and so is The Guilty People. Sa'amat uh, is written by Yusuf Sibai, also another uh, movie that shows the 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 character of uh, of Cairo and the life of Cairo at that period of time. So definitely uh, to 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 pass through these 101 uh, movies uh, can really be stimulating 
uh, for us to understand how far these uh, movies have affected generations and how far it has uh, changed the way we perceive the society that we are living in. Uh, Disgrace, the movie Elar, always has a very big place into the uh, movie goers' uh, fans. The Driver of the, or the Bus Driver by Noor Sharif, one of the most beautiful movies of Noor Sharif, that has a master scene uh, when one lady asks that she has been robbed and suddenly the, the bus driver who has been covered with all frustrations of Noor Sharif all through the movie comes out from the bus, holds the, uh, the thief in his hand and starts beating him up as if he's beating all the people who have uh, wrongfully done him a lot of misdeeds and misfortunes. And he's saying, he's calling them, all of them, to be sons of gun, as they say. So definitely, uh, this is a master scene of the bus driver. Adil Imam uh, film, the, the professional, or Harif, has celebrated 40 years after it's uh, going in, and everybody is still thinking that this is one of the best movies that Adil Imam have ever uh, done in his life. We can see that these movies can go on and on and on and we can stay with uh, with the film of uh, uh, of uh, uh, Jacobian or the wife of uh, Jacobian building or the wife of an important uh, man. The, the role of how uh, when power disappears from your hand as a, as a middle uh, of middle uh, aged officer or police officer how character has changed and how he uh, suffers, uh, he and his wife, from uh, the, uh, the loss of power, because it's very important to, to feel the power and avoid its loss. Because if you lose it, and then you will lose part of your mind if you are considering it to be the most important part of your life. Uh, perhaps we shouldn't leave you before talking about one of the master Egyptian movies, I really, I think a lot of people admire, and that is Kit Kat by Mahmoud Abdul Aziz. And it's a novel by Ibrahim Aslan and directed by Dawood Abdel Said. So three important genius people have done a beautiful film about a blind man living in Kit Kat who pretends or he definitely thinks that he's still able to see. The world through the eyes of a blind man or the Kit Kat, is definitely a movie to be watched. For us and for a lot of people, it stays uh, as a, a mark in the history of the Egyptian movies and industry and definitely remains as an important uh, part of our, uh, our effect. Uh, one of the nice movies as well is, of course, The Dark uh, Birds or Tur Zalam by Adel Imam Yusra and Sharif Arafa is another movie that uh, definitely uh, deserves a place in the portfolio of the Egyptian movies of 101 movies. I believe this uh, book has, bring, has brought us a lot of nostalgia, has stimulated us to look back at these movies with admiration and with love and care. And I think that this will be uh, the last thing that I'm going to say, talk to you about in World of Info. Today was the world of books. I presented two interesting books, The Fake Heroes by Otto English or Andrew Scott, and talking about also the most important 101 Egyptian movies by Samah Fathi. Uh, we, are, we are coming live from Studio 3. Stay tuned to Radio Cairo. My name is Dr. Amr Mabrouk. Dua Muhammad was at the control. Say, see you same time, same station next week, and stay tuned to Radio Cairo.